papers on the impact of um, reforms in the Indian P PDS. Uh, so uh, I'll turn over to Shimon. Uh, thank you, Rasmi. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I can't see the slides. You have to move that. Yeah. I see you, sir. It's working. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to be presenting uh, on a framework of, uh, of approaches to strengthen the nutrition sensitivity of uh, social protection programs in India. <coughs> um, I, this is a presentation uh, that I've made with Kalyani, with a lot of help from Poonama and Harold, so I'd like to uh, thank them. Um, so uh, I'll be focusing on India's rights-based interventions. So broadly, uh, in India, we have two sets of uh, programs. One is the, is the nutrition-sensitive uh, programs, and the other, the nutrition-specific programs. The specific programs include uh, ICDS, uh, a supplementary nutrition program, and the maternity benefit, the conditional cash transfer that we've already spoken about. I won't be talking about those in this presentation. I'll be focusing on the nutrition-sensitive programs. Um, well, there are three. There's the, the food security safety net, which is the public distribution system. There's uh, the school feeding program, which is the midday meal scheme. And uh, there's the employment program, which is uh, the NREGA. Uh, so uh, broadly, the PDS under India's National Food Security Act entitles uh, individuals, which are targeted individuals, to about five kilograms of uh, rice, wheat, or coarse cereals per month, which they can buy at very low prices of three to one rupees uh, per kg. Uh, for the midday meal scheme, uh, a child is entitled to a free lunch at school uh, if he's or she is uh, 16 to 14 years of age and attends a government or government-aided school. And uh, for the NREGA, uh, you're entitled, a household is entitled to 100 days of employment in unskilled manual labor uh, per household per year. Now, the overarching objective of social protection uh, programs in India is greater equity and poverty reduction. So to this end, uh, the NFSA in 2013 uh, has a, a target coverage of about 75% of the rural population and 50% of the urban population. Uh, the midday meal scheme is universal in government schools, and the NREGA is based on demand for the scheme itself. So if we take a look at the coverage numbers uh, in 2011 from the NSS data, we see that about half of the rural households uh, in India access the PDS every month, and about a third of the, rural, uh, of the urban households access the PDS. Whereas uh, in rural areas, about uh, the, the coverage of the midday meal scheme is around 42%, in rural areas and 15% in urban areas. Um, for Narega, the demand is around 30% uh, of households demand Narega work and about 23% actually get it. Of course, the coverage of uh, the PDS and the midday meal scheme had been increasing for the past decade. So these numbers from 2011 are outdated now and coverage would be much higher in 2015. So um, uh, Ruel and Alderman in their Lancet paper in 2013 uh, outlined three basic approaches that one can take to looking at uh, how to maximize nutrition sensitivity of programs. The first approach is to address the underlying determinants of fetal and childhood nutrition and development. The second approach is uh, to incorporate specific nutrition goals or actions. And the third approach is to serve as a deli delivery platforms for nutrition specific interventions. Um, I'm going to try to explain what each of these applies, I mean, implies in the Indian framework. Uh, I'm going to go through each of these individually so that maybe we can understand better uh, what they mean. So let's take the first approach, which is addressing the underlying determinants. Now, uh, the National Food Security Act proposes three reforms to enhance food security, which uh, in turn will address the underlying determinants. Uh, which, which is extending the coverage of uh, the consumer subsidy to more beneficiaries than were entitled to before. So this is effectively taking the coverage up to 66% of India's population. And it increases the per beneficiary subsidy values by making cereals very cheap. And it encourages greater monitoring and vigilance. Um, for the NREGA, uh, it's also an act, so it's a right. And therefore, it uh, expands the earning sources of the people, especially in the slack seasons. And uh, it also creates public assets and can enhance agricultural productivity and also uh, provide for irrigation, etc. But uh, one 
particular example that I liked was Kalyani told me that it, it has been said that you could actually build uh, some simple two-pit latrines using Narega labor, which would then make it more nutrition sensitive by adding something like that to the program. Uh, again, under approach one, th these are the things that have been uh, mostly written about in the EPW. So for the PDS, um, of course, uh, this is across all three of these programs is uh, actually strengthening the way they work currently and making them work effectively for what they're primarily mandated to do is the first approach. So better identification of households living below the poverty line uh, for the PDS, addressing the leakages which have been talked about so much in the EPW as well, uh, would actually get, you know, reduce the wastage of resources, both financial and physical and uh, testing the use of cash transfers in urban areas maybe has a potential to reduce transfer costs as we saw earlier in the morning uh, cash transfers have lower costs um, the midday meal scheme ensuring adherence to nutritional standards by routine testing of meal samples and in, in fact a study done in delhi showed that about 90 percent of the meals did not meet the standards and ensuring adequate infrastructure like kitchen sheds storage access to clean water etc is also very important uh, for Narega, addressing corruption and the siphoning off of funds, uh, reducing delays in payment, and providing work in a timely fashion when demanded is key. Because if, you, if you're unable to demand, uh, give them work when they need it, then it won't be very nutrition sensitive at all. Uh, so now the second and third approaches are actually more uh, closer to nutrition in terms of what we can do to these programs to change them to make them more nutrition sensitive. Uh, the, the second approach to remind you is to incorporate nutrition goals and the third one is to uh, serve as a delivery platform for nutrition specific interventions. So there have been numerous state level initiatives that have been taken on and I'd like to discuss some of these uh, just to see where they fall into these categories and how we're uh, starting to think about them. So uh, the first uh, for the PDS under approach to under incorporating nutrition goals uh, there's diversifying the food basket. So currently under the PDS, households get rice, coarse cereals, sugar, and kerosene. But some states have introduced more items to this basket, which includes pulses and fortified oils. Now, the pulse subsidy and the oil subsidy vary from state to state, so we don't have exact data on what each state did. But we do know that uh, they about approximately subsidized one kilo of pulse per month per family. And uh, they gave a per unit subsidy of about uh, uh, maybe 20 rupees per kilo. But uh, as Avinash informs me, he might have more to tell you on that. And um, the cost estimates for these are not available currently. We do have some estimates. Uh, I'll, I'll give you some estimates of the ones that I made uh, later in, in this presentation. Uh, fortification, uh, there's, a, there's a really good study done, uh, done by Fiedler, Fiedler et al. in 2012 uh, in Gujarat where a PDS wheat was fortified. Actually, Atta was fortified. And um, it was fortified with iron and folic acid at a very low unit cost of only about uh, 0.53 uh, US dollars per metric ton, which is you know, surprisingly very low. And, uh, and uh, among PDS beneficiaries, the proportion of with inadequate iron intake was reduced by about 94% according to the study. Um, under approach three, uh, to serve as a delivery platform for nutrition specific interventions, um, not much has been done under the PDS so far, but uh, we've been thinking about this and we've, um, you know, some possibilities we can throw out there are maybe the ration shops could become hubs for the distribution of, say, food supplements for women and children if they want to purchase them at low cost or if they want to buy ORS at, at a low cost. And could it be subsidized? And if it could be, how much would it cost? Uh, under the midday meal scheme, again, under approach to incorporating nutrition goals, Diversifying the food basket has also been talked about. Uh, the cu currently, uh, they serve rice, wheat, pulses, vegetables, and oil in, in the meal. But some states are also starting to add more, like fruits and eggs. Now, Karnataka provides eggs and milk. Tamil Nadu provides eggs and bananas. Pondicherry provides eggs, and Odisha provides eggs. Bihar also provides fruits and eggs. But um, there, there were no studies that I could find on the nutritional impact of these, uh, uh, these initiatives by the states. Or, but I did find that uh, the unit cost, uh, if you calculate it on a per day basis, although these are not done on a per day basis, they're done twice a week, but if you, it works out to about 1.75 per day uh, per child. Uh, for If you use the Pondicherry unit cost in about 1.9, so they're pretty close. Um, then there's fortification. Again, uh, if you take the, the wheat example in Gujarat, 
Um, this time, they tried fortifying it with nine micronutrients, which included vitamin A, iron, zinc, calcium, iodine, riboflavin, uh, ascorbic acid, uh, folic acid, vitamin B12, niacin, and thymine. Um, the unit cost was uh, much higher than what it cost to fortify PDS grains with, with iron. Uh, as you can see, it's about 25 per metric ton. And uh, the proportion of the population with inadequate vitamin, inta uh, vitamin A intake was reduced by about 34%, and it effectively eliminated inadequate intake of both iron and zinc. Um, then something similar was done by, by Paths and Gain and Nandi Foundation, where they fortified rice uh, with um, iron, and the unit cost was lower than for wheat. It was around 18.8 .8 per metric ton. And then uh, double fortified salt is now currently in the, in the 2015 midday meal mandate. It basically states that only double fortified salt should be used uh, to cook meals. So, but we don't know how far that's taken off. And the cost of adding it is actually quite low. It's only about 0.6 uh, US dollars per kg of salt. And that's a unit cost from the micronutrient initiative. Um, again, under approach three to serve as um, delivery platforms for nutrition specific interventions. Um, a package of deworming iron and vitamin A was tried in Gujarat, and uh, there's a paper by uh, Gopaldas. Sorry, uh, by uh, yeah, by Gopaldas, uh, and it says that um, it takes roughly about 11 to 20 rupees per child per year to do this. Of course, that uh, that paper didn't have uh, much to say about the impact, but uh, there was a study which was done on preschool children by Bubonis et al., and uh, it did see an impact on weight gain for those who are most likely to be anemic at baseline levels. But this is, again, for preschool children, not for uh, school children. So the impact may differ by age. Uh, another example is uh, there's a study in China with multi multiple micronutrient supplements. And they, again, see uh, reduced anemia levels there. For the NREGA, uh, we know that NREGA was not designed as a nutrition program per se, and it does not incorporate nutrition specific goals. However, uh, through its impact on sanitation and agriculture, it can enhance these. And um, under approach three, it can serve as a delivery platform. Uh, one you could think about is uh, using the crash system. It could have more convergence between Narega and ICDS, and possibly employ some women uh, through Narega to uh, help out with the ICDS system, but that's something that needs far more thinking about. And uh, the NREGA has actually enabled a large system of uh, bank payment system, actually, uh, which was which is usually debated in India. That it's not very feasible, but NREGA does manage to provide payments to people, and so we could learn a lot of lessons, and it could actually show some way on how cash transfers could be implemented as well. Um, a, a broad summary is of the interventions is basically. So there are three interventions that I discussed is the PDS, the Midday Meal Scheme, and uh, Narega. Under approach one, uh, in, and under the PDS, administrative reforms are key. Under the Midday Meal Scheme, adherence to the nutritional standards and safety standards. And under Narega, maybe start to think about building pit latrines through Narega. And uh, under approach two, adding pulses of fortified oils or fortifying cereal under the PDS. Uh, under the Midday Meal Scheme, adding fruits or eggs or even fortifying the cereal. Uh, and under Narega, uh, we need to assess the possibilities. And uh, for approach three, uh, delivery platforms, supplements to women and children, or a ORS, that's a question. Uh, deworming tablets and iron f for the midday meal scheme. And for Narega, maybe greater convergence with the ICDS. Finally, I'd like to leave you with some costing numbers, which are very important when it comes to these. Um, so this is what the, the three programs currently cost the government. The PDS is uh, the most costly out of these. It costs about $18.2 billion every year. The Rega costs around $6 billion and midday meal around $2 billion. So the midday meal cost is a little lower. It would be higher because they actually receive grains free of cost from the FCI. Um, now, I costed some basic numbers and came to, so if, if we assume that we give a per unit of 30 rupees subsidy on the pulse for the same thing that's been going on, one kg of pulse per family for about 300 million families, it would increase the PDS cost by around 10% if you cost it that way. But what's, uh, what's uh, really nice to see here is the fortification cost at scale is, is that little red sliver. It's actually invisible on this graph, but I had to put it there to show you how much additional it'll cost. Compared to the scale of cost in the PDS, it would cost next to nothing. Um, and uh, under the midday meal scheme, if you see if you universalize the provision of eggs, it would add another 600 million US dollars 
Fortification would add, add about 58 and deworming and iron and salt around 35, which would uh, increase cost by around 35% for the midday meal scheme. Um, finally, I'd just like to leave you with a word about learning and evaluation. So these, these state uh, initiatives are opportunities to learn for everyone, but there are very few studies uh, or evaluations of state level initiatives like the Pulse, uh, Pulse program or the oil subsidies or the X through the midday meal. We don't know what impact they had on nutrition and actually it would be uh, great if we had some studies that could actually study the impact of these initiatives. And learning should be embedded as a routine practice for all interventions and initiatives that states take up. Thank you.